Today's micro moment is all about how to find tested recipes online. And the best tested recipes that you can find online are the ones that are contained in uh, this book. Either this is the 2015 edition or there's a 2020 edition. And this is the USDA home canning book. And so we're going to um, turn to my computer and I'm going to show you several ways that you can find these recipes online and answer so many questions that you may have just by looking it up on the internet. So here we go. Here is a fresh Google page. Now, I can either enter what I'm wanting right here in this line, or Google has one right here where you can enter it here. Now, because I go to several different ones, I usually do this one because there's not always a middle one on every um, computer, so right up here. Now, if I am wanting to um, search for a recipe for uh, canning cherries, I'm going to type in USDA canning cherries. And then I'm going to hit enter. And it's going to give me several menu choices. So this one right here says sweet or sour cherries, whole National Center for Home dot 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 dot. National Center for Home Food Preservation is the same as the USDA. So this is going to be a good one. Then here's one that says, let's preserve cherries, Penn State Extension. Anything that says extension is very good. Penn State is especially good. Now what you're going to want to avoid is coming down here to the pretty pictures. Um, these might be okay, but they are individual um, sites, just like my site is, and there's no guarantee that they are going to follow the USDA. So here is sweet cherries for canning or freezing grades and standards. That's a little too technical. It is the USDA.gov. Uh, we don't want .gov. And so here's home canned cherries, healthy canning. That's a website. We don't want that. So we're going to go back to the top, and these are our first two choices right here. So let's go to the National Center. Aha. Uh -huh. Now, this is the one that we want. The National Center is the very same thing as the ones that are found in this canning book. So what you want to watch for is the green border that goes across the top, and then National Center for Home Food Preservation. Then look what it does. Sweet Sour Cherries Whole. How much you need? 17 and a half pounds for seven quarts. The quality, the procedure, it tells you exactly step by step what to do. Then they give us two choices. We can either hot pack or we can raw pack it. So either one of those, there's your instructions right there. Then here are the canning tables. This is um, recommended process time for sweet or sour cherries in a boiling water canner. That's great. So we can go here. Here is a dial gauge pressure canner. Oh goodness, we can do either boiling water or a pressure canner. And so according to our elevation, and you need to know what your elevation is, these are the cooking times. It is the times that vary um, when we do water bath canning. It is the amount of pressure. This is PSI pressure down here for the um, pressure canning, dial gauge pressure canner, weighted gauge pressure canner. And so here's all of the information that you need. So what if we wanted to look up um, how to can hamburger? So again, I'm going to type, I'm, I'm highlighting this, and now I can press delete, so we have now an empty border or an empty little menu bar. So I'm going to type in USDA canning hamburger. See what it gives us. Okay, so we have canning meat, ground or chopped, National Center for dot, dot, dot. Ah, that is the one that we want. Here is... Um, uga.edu, University of Georgia, that would also be a good one to go to. We're going to avoid these because sometimes these individual places do really weird things with hamburger. And so we can scroll all the way down. It's going to come back with several thousand. This one has 69,000 results. Now, because I have done so much looking up things, these are at the top of my menu bar. They might not be at the top of yours, so you might have to scroll. So again, let's check this out. Ah, there's the green um, banner across the top. 
Here again is we can can bear, beef, lamb, pork, sausage, veal, venison. Tells us the procedure and we only have possibilities for hot pack in a pressure canner. And again, there are the tables. All right, so let's do, um, let's do soups. USDA canning soup. Oh, well, it's altogether different. Now, the, the pi pretty pictures are at the top. I'm gonna skip those. I'm gonna go down here, National Center for Home. Ah, that's the one we want. So we're gonna go there. So it says soups right here, and it's giving you an idea of the different ingredients that you can use in soups. And um, you can make your own recipe as long as they're sort of similar to this. And then again, here is pressure canning, and it is only hot pack. So this is a very valuable resource for um, locating tested recipes. Now, what if I wanted to find out foods not to can? What if I want to find out, well, can you can evaporated milk? Let's find out. Um, USDA canning, oh no, I want to say USDA foods not to can. Okay, so foods that are not safe to can Right here, Penn State Extension. Woo, woo, that was a good one, so I'm going to check there. Thanks. Glad to help. Oh, that was my watch. So, foods that are not safe to can, and it goes through everyone. Dairy products, not safe to can. Beware of butter, cheese, or milk. Eggs, oil, starch, pasta and rice very dense purees, breads and cakes in a jar, and tender products, like we should not can broccoli, cauliflower, except for pickled, eggplant, or summer squash. These are low acid foods and would require a pressure process, and they just disintegrate. And so this is very good information to have, where to go for learning what not to can. So this is how you can quickly find out um, what the safe foods are to can and what the, can, uh, what the ones are not to can. One more thing I would like to show you. Let's go to USDA um, canning publications. So I've typed USDA canning publications right there. So let's go. All right, so it gives me some, it gives me the very book that I've been using. But here is USD Publications National Center for Home Food, dot, dot, dot. So here is a list of all of the parts of this book. Here is right here in this list, Principles of Home Canning. Here's canning fruit, tomatoes, vegetables, meats, fermented food, jams and jellies. Over on this side, there are some very interesting things you can check out too. For instance, this is their blog and they answer up-to-date questions. This one is especially important. Dry canning raw vegetables is an unsafe practice. If you have been on the internet, you know that there are some people that say, put your potato chunks in a jar, but don't add any water, and just pressure can them like you were canning regularly. They have a picture of quartz right here with no water. And so they talk right here about why it is very dangerous to do that, either with vegetables. And I can also add four with meat as well. So that's a nice little article that you can read. I hope this is helpful and gives you some pointers in how to quickly find out if you want to can a certain thing that you can look to see if it has been tested. If you cannot find a tested recipe or a tested recipe that you can adapt slightly then it is likely that it is not safe to can. Now, I'm always happy to help answer questions, but for those that want to be self-reliant, this is a way that you can do that. So, thank you, and we'll see you again for our next micro moment.